Hey guys, welcome back to Fate Stay Night, and boy oh boy, two episodes in a row we had some, we had some good stuff. We had some good stuff. Now tell me, what what spicy action are we going to deal with today? Well, guess the only way to find out. Arturia, the girl who had just finished her rite of passage would be known by that name from that day on. It was a time of chaos and war. It began with the demise of an empire. An empire believed to be indestructible was only awaiting its destruction at the hands of invading barbarians. To prepare for the war against these barbarians, the empire deprived this land, or the empire deprived this island country of any military forces. That was the beginning. Once her country lost the empire's protection, it could not escape becoming independent, and it broke into smaller countries in no time. The barbarian invasions, self-destructive and strife between clans, a long period of war that would later be called the Dark Ages. She was born into this period as the heir to the throne. It was a long period of chaos. The king believed that the magus' prophecy and yearned for the birth of his appointed successor. But the child that was born was not the one the king desired. The child was not a boy. Even if the child was fated to become a king, he could not make a child that was not a boy his successor. Bro, the misogyny here. I'm not not liking this. I'm not I'm not liking this. The girl was entrusted to the king's vassals and was raised as a child of a mere knight. The king fell into despair, but the magus was delighted. The sex of one who could become king had never mattered. He was confident in the fact of the girl being separated from the castle until the day of the prophecy was proof that she would become king. The girl grew up as a successor under the simple and wise old knight. The old knight did not really believe the Magus' prophecy. He just felt the same air from the girl as he did from his king, so he felt he must raise her as a knight and he wished her to grow. But the knight did not even have to wish for such a thing as the girl trained day after day to become stronger than anyone. If only a king can save a ruined country heated for death, the girl swore to bear a sword for that reason alone, without ever being told so. So the day of the prophecy arrived. Knights and lords from around the country gathered to be selected as the king. Every one of them expected the selection to be through jousting if the most superior one was to become a king. But the only thing prepared at the place of selection was a naked sword stuck in stone. On the hilt of the sword was a golden inscription. Whosoever pulleth out this sword of this stone is rightwise king born of England. Many knights grabbed the sword following that command. But no one was able to pull the sword out and the knights began the expected selection method of jousting. As the girl was only an apprentice, she was not qualified to joust. The girl neared the deserted stone of selection and reached out for the sword without hesitation. When she turned around, before her was the most feared magus in the country. The magus said that she would no longer be human once she took a hold of the sword. Oh, that, that was Merlin. That's what I thought. He has a different voice in uh, in Grand Order, so I, the, uh, one plus one was not adding up in my head from there. So anyway, the girl only responded with a nod. Becoming a king meant no longer being human. She was prepared for that ever since she was born. In short, a king is someone who kills everyone to protect everyone. Hmm, that's a little interesting philosophy. Maybe, uh, maybe, uh. Maybe uh, she and uh, Emya should, you know, like, work things out, have a little philosophical discussion overnight, you know? The young girl thought about it every night and shuddered until morning came. No day passed that she did not fear that fact. But the girl said that it would end this day. The sword was pulled out as if it were only natural to do so, and the place was filled with light. In that instant, she became something not human. The king's gender doesn't matter. No one will care about the king's appearance or even notice if the king acts like a king. Even if anybody noticed that the king was female, there will be no problem if she was a good king. 
Perhaps because of the sword's magic, the girl's growth stopped at the time as well. Many knights feared it as ominous, but most of them praised their master's immortality as divine. And thus, the time of the king who would become a legend started. The battles of the new king were indeed the acts of a god of war. The king always led from the front. No enemies could stand in her way. Arturia, the god of war. There was no defeat for a body mirrored as a dragon in human form. For ten years and twelve battles, she knew only victory. Those were the days she ran through as the king. She never turned back and was never disgraced. She was raised as the king and fulfilled her obligations as the king. That is a beautiful shot. The art here, pretty good. Is that why I saw such a figure? Her soul must still be on the battlefield. Before daybreak, resting her body in the wind under the indigo blue sky, she just gazes into the distance. The sky is high and the clouds are flowing fast. Under the clear air, she's looking at the great army she must face with her sword in hand. That figure is burned in and will not go away. She and her sword are one. The sword from the stone that chose the king. I think the brilliance of the sword that selected her fate is also her brilliance. But I wonder in the dream, that sword is different from the one she had. It is similar but different. The one she used last night is different from this sword. So, how did she lose such a fine sword? How did she lose it? Good point. Oh, what a nice good morning. When I wake up, I'm in my room. It's light outside. I guess I fell asleep after coming back to my room, unable to make a decision. It was a strange dream. Events I shouldn't know about, things I didn't know about Saber. Is it possible for me to dream about them? I vaguely think. Saber's true identity that was hidden. To be honest, I still can't accept who she is. Saber is just Saber. Can't change my attitude just because I know who she was before, and I don't think Saber would want that either. The sword from yesterday suited her, but the sword in my dream also suited her. No, you could say I was fascinated. With yesterday's sword and the sword in my dream, it seems I fall for swords easily. It's a little, it's a little sus, bro. You want to rephrase that? I also thought Lancer's lance was beautiful. It's a little sus, bro. You want to rephrase that? When I saw it, but my interest in swords is exceptional. I'm not doing this a third time. It seems I'm easily attracted to swords. Please stop. I take a deep breath and reach up to my sweaty face. And I wipe the sweat off my forehead. Even though it's winter, my body is burning. Feels like my blood is getting hotter and I feel restless. My body has been strangely hot. The hand that bears the command spell is hot as if it's holding a pocket heater. That reminds me, is that still active? You still got your, uh, still got your, uh, fuck, I forgot what it was called. Spirit, no, not spirit link. Not command spell, that's a different thing. Fuck it, who cares? I don't care anymore. <laughs> who cares? Moving on. I take a deep breath to try to calm myself. Saber has not woken up even once since last night. It still seems she's getting better. Her breathing is calm now and there's no sign she's gasping in pain. Saber is sleeping peacefully. This is an everyday morning scene. If I let her sleep like this, she might get back to normal. Then there'll be no need to have her kill people. Huh, that's a lovely thought. Then, just like now, Saber will be with me and... I hit the wall. 
so weak that it makes me sick. Get up. Try not to make a sound. I don't know when Saber will wake up, but I have to make a decision before she does. Tasaka must still be asleep. There's no energy in the house and it feels like it's abandoned. No, I'm just depressed. Oh. Darn. Don't we all, buddy? Aren't we all? I can't decide, so I'm just wandering around in a gray state and that causes the world to be vague. I hear something cut through the air. I remember that sound. Yeah. I don't feel like cooking breakfast right now, so I'll take a walk and check it out. It's much colder than usual outside. It must be really cold if my burning body feels it. So cold that it might snow. Sound is coming periodically. I cross the yard, breathing out white puffs. He's in there in front of the shed. Guess I kind of knew he'd be here, so I wasn't surprised. Must have been shooting arrows until now. He lowers his bow in displeasure as soon as he sees me. Doesn't need to tell me that. The sound was Archer's bowstring cutting through the air. I don't know why, but Archer isn't using any arrows, but only pulling his bow. お前、本当にアーチャーだったんだ。さて、私はお前が知っている弓使いとは違うからな。弓道など聞かれても <laughs> what you, your arrows are shot to target yourself. What is what is that? Is, is this some sort of dig? I don't this is a little suspicious. He curls his lips offensively. As I thought I can't get along with him. I see. He's healed now, so then that means Tasaka should return to the war. I turn away. Since Tasaka and Archer are rejoining the battle, I must make a decision. I have to think seriously somewhere where I can be alone. Certainly there are eight movements in archery called the eight stages of shooting. The last one, the follow through, is the state that comes after shooting an arrow, but... ならば、当たるか当たらぬかなど確認する必要はない。this statement makes my heart jump. That's certainly... Well, 
矢が当たるかどうかを見極めるものではない放った矢がならば斬新とはその結果を受け入れるための心構えではなかった分かってる要するに最後まで見届けろって言いたいんだろうお前はそういうことだセイバーのことは聞いた彼女がこのような状態になるのは初めから分かっていたことだろうそれはもう決まっていたことだならば All that's left is to accept the result Is he saying that no matter what happens to Saber because of my decisions all I can do is see through what happens? And I turn my back to Archer I will leave this guy once and for all それともう一つ気がついていないようだから教えておこう Hear a voice behind me Saber はな工具を使えば自分が消えると分かっていたはずだ彼女はおそらく最後まで宝具を使う気はなかったのだろう。The usual offensive tone isn't present in his voice. にもかかわらず、宝具を使った理由は一つ。セイバーは、自身が消えることより、お前を守ることを選んだのだ。それを、決して忘れるな。His voice holds only honest sincerity. The park is empty as usual. Maybe it helps that it's colder today than usual. There's no one around, and it looks like I'm the only one out at this time. I sit on the bench sluggishly. I came to a deserted place as I wished to. Now that I'm here, I must decide what to do. There are no choices that allow me to postpone the problem. If I'm able to end the Holy Grail War by defeating other masters, I need Saber to stay. No, even without that, I don't want her to disappear. That means having Saber attack people like Ryder did. There's no way I can do that. Making Saber do such a thing would be like telling her to die. First of all, Saber would surely refuse, but. When I hang my head, I see my left hand. I have two command spells left. If I use one, I can force Saber to follow my command. I bite my lip and discard the ridiculous thought. I don't know how long I remain slumped on this bench, but just as my fingers start to tremble from the cold. I'm suddenly called. As I start to say that, I'm amazed at my stupidity. Ilya is a master, too. I shouldn't be worried about this, and anyway, aren't we enemies? Sitting down on the bench, I dismiss Ilya. There are things I need to talk to her about, but I have my hands full with Saber right now. Eh? What's going on? Ilya doesn't say anything and she just stares at me as if I'm a stranger. Suddenly, the girl in front of me says this coldly as if she's someone else. I move my legs. I know it's bad to stay sitting down, so I put my power in them to stand up. But my body does not move as if entranced by Ilya. Ilya. 
I try to move my arms and legs, but they won't move at all. No, it feels like they're stiffening the more I put power into them. It's those eyes. Looking into Ilya's red eyes is making my body go numb and dude. Word it differently. Like we... I thought we had this conversation already. You need to pick your words a little better. あ、<笑> Murderous intent mixes into Ilya's gaze. This is the same Ilya as that night when she was the master of Berserker. Gritting my teeth, I gather all my strength. But I can't even twitch my fingers. Every nerve in my body is wrapped by Ilya's stare. Ilya raises her hand. Her white slender fingers touch my chest. So is anyone else weirded out by this whole fisheye lens thing, or is it just me? Eh, good night. My vision fades. Sensation in my limbs is already gone, and now my vision is gone as well. How long has it been since I fell into this darkness? While I wonder whether or not I'm dead, my consciousness fades away. My body is burning. Even though my consciousness is deep in the darkness, by burning Bonnie is appealing that it's alive. And I see, I guess I'm alive then. But even if that's the case, that's only for the moment. Ilya said it too. She's right. I can't fight at all without Saber. The Holy Grail War is a battle between servants. I can't possibly match one of those servants. That fact has been proven many times already. It was a merciless beating. As Saber said, my battle against a servant is to survive. I couldn't even do that. I was cut all over my body and on top of that, thrown to the ground from a third floor window. I only survived because of abnormality in my body that I don't even understand. That fact is so vexing that it makes me mad. I could not stop the disaster occurring around me just because the one in front of me was unbeatable. Even though I chose to fight. I chose to fight as a master to stop people getting hurt, but I could not protect them. It pisses me off. The superhero I've admired since childhood always has to win, or it's meaningless. My body is burning. My whole body is demanding that I must win. But I don't have any means of winning nor a way to fight. How would I be able to fight? I don't have the skills to fight alongside Saber without being a burden to her. Suddenly, I remember the back of the man who said those words. I know. I realize that more than ever now. He doesn't need to tell me something that I already know. If I'm going to win, it'll only be in my head. But what could I win with? I can't imagine myself beating a servant. I can't handily deceive myself, and an image created by deceiving myself will be full of flaws. There's no way I'll be able to match a servant, a first-class illusion with such a third-rate image. So, 
What will I be able to beat? And what will I be able to beat it with? I am searching for the answer to that question. Searching for the answer even now. A golden sword. It's a sword for her alone. I don't want it myself. It's just beautiful. I just want to hold it in my hands if it's permitted. Eesh, it's a bad habit for an amateur magus. Since all I can do is examine the contents, I see such dreams unsuitable for my position. But, if this is a dream, I should be allowed to at least think about it. First, I assume the basic structure and reproduce the composing material. Oh, the basic form from when I used the strengthening magic isn't enough as I thought. Strengthening is changing something that's already there, so it's meaningless with something that isn't there at all. So, if I'm able to remember that sword, I have to put more effort into it. It's well before the basics. It's the process full of waste that I came up with before Kiritsugu taught me how to use the strengthening magic. Uh, how is it supposed to take shape? When I come to, I'm in a ridiculous place. How many ellipses is this? Jesus Christ. Isn't this isn't just some place I've never seen before? It has a bed with a gorgeous canopy and a long carpet that makes looks like you could sink to your ankles. A stone fireplace that's not just decorative but actually functional. The patterns on the wall aren't just wallpaper as they're actually engraved. I'm used to mansions like Shinji's house, but this is on a different level. It's embarrassing to say, but this is like a castle you read about in fairy tales. My mind almost falls unconscious. My body is strangely heavy. Is my blood circulating poorly? I feel like I'll fall asleep again if I let my guard down. I try to remember with my hazy mind. Oh, oh yeah, I was bound by Ilya and lost consciousness. No one's in the room. My body feels heavy, but it seems I can at least raise my arm. My dazed mind instantly awakens. Realizing the danger I'm in, I study my situation first. I'm not in the worst condition, but it makes no difference to the fact that I can't move. My body is still numb and I can't even get up with my hands tied. There is no clock in the room. The window is behind me. Turn around as much as I can, but the curtain is draped over it and I can't quite tell what's outside. But the sun has already set outside. I met Ilya in the morning, so that means at least half a day has passed. I can't be doing this now. I don't know where I am, but I have to go home to Saber as quickly as I can. Saber is weakening. I can't trouble her by letting her know I've been kidnapped. I pull at my hands. Even if I'm able to run away, I have to do something about the rope tied behind my back first. The door opens. I release my power at the same moment she walks in. <laughs> Ilya is acting totally different from before. Her cold eyes are gone and the Ilya before me is the white girl who was talking to me in that park the other day. She looks at me, tilting her head. It looks like she's just worried about me? I glare at Ilya. Oh, well, that's a relief. I'm flattered. Ilya looks displeased. I don't know if I should be thankful or not. But anyway, I'm starting to understand the situation I'm in. I say so sharply, killing my emotions. 
As long as I don't know the full details of the situation, I should listen for now. そこは樹海の中の城で周りには何もないわ。白は住んでる町まで車で何時間もかかるんだもの。そうか。それは分かったけど、なんだってそんなことしたんだ。俺を殺すんなら、あの公園で出来たじゃないか。なんで私白を
セイバーもトウサカも関係ない俺は自分だけの都合でイリアとはいそうなのけど二人は殺すわそれが終わったら次はシローの番よ私のものにならないのならシローなんていらないもの She starts to go She's serious She's gonna go kill Saber into Sokka And Ilya will probably manage that easily やめろイリアセイバーもトウサカも関係ないだろう捕まってるのは俺なんだから憎いって言うなら俺だけにしろ理由はあるわ私以外のマスターは生かしておけないものバカ簡単に人を殺すなんて言うなお前にはそんなの似合わないイリアはまだ子供なんだからそんな真似だけはしちゃダメだ After looking at me in amazement 残念ね私はもうマスターを殺してるんだよお兄ちゃん Ilya says so with a cheerful face. God damn. Oh, so she killed Shinji, huh? My only regret is that I didn't get to do it myself. At that moment, to my surprise, I clearly understand what she's talking about. Ilya said she was in that building last night, so wasn't the master fleeing in front of her the perfect prey? She doesn't sound guilty at all. For Ilya, it must have been nothing at all. That makes me realize. No, I should have known the last time I met her. This girl has no sense of good and evil. If the girl laughing innocently is Ilya, the girl laughing mercilessly is also Ilya. It's not like a devil and an angel are in her at the same time. It's just that Ilya is a devil called an angel. Huh? What do you, what, what do you mean? Let's go. 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 小鳥は小鳥なのお兄ちゃんじゃこの鳥かごからは出られないでしょうけどイリア leaves the room What she says is true as she doesn't understand threats or haggling everything she says is true So I can't stay here forever I have to escape and meet up with Saber before イリア attacks her I shake my body and try to loosen the ropes She really must think I can't escape as there's no one in the room. I can get out of these ropes on myself if there's no one keeping watch, but. Not working well enough. Even though I can move, my limbs are heavy as steel, and just moving them will run me out of breath. <laughs> Certainly, I can't move. Even if I can get the rope off, I won't be able to escape if my body won't move to my satisfaction. It must be what they call the mystic eyes. They say a superior magus is able to intervene magically with a target by just looking into their eyes. A common form of mystic eyes is binding, so this must be something like that. As eyes perceive visual information, their disadvantage is that they're weak against suggestion. Therefore, a magist usually casts some protection over their eyes to shut out others' magical energy. Well, there are just mystic eyes that are acquired with the use of magic. But I hear that monsters born with such eyes don't even need to look at the eyes of their target. These people exhibit their ability by looking, but I hear powers are rare. So, fortunately, it doesn't seem like Ilya's mystic eyes are the special kind. This is just an intervention, sending her magical energy into my body. Then there's a way to dispel myself. I can't move my body because Ilya's magical energy is invading my nerves. So, if I remove that magical energy, I will be able to move again. Closing my eyes, I concentrate on the inside of my body. I don't have the skills to detect or remove someone's magical energy within me. 
But such skills are unnecessary if the magical energy is not rooted in my body. If Ilya's magical energy is stagnant in my body, all I have to do is strong magical energy through me and push it out. I apologize that my body is some consolation. All I have to do now is my daily routine. The ritual where I drive in a nerve into my back. No, it's not that anymore. There's no need to make a new one now. I can just push a switch inside of me. I don't have to make a magic circuit inside me as I have to switch my nerves into a magic circuit. I cast a spell to suggest myself. Spells do not do anything to the world. It's only something that one casts on oneself as one interfering with the world. Words are the best way to make your body transform. An order that only works on the self to create a divine mystery. A very simple magic spell. My circulation speeds up. My blood gains power. My body turns into a device for pumping magical energy. It must be assistance from that jewel Tasaka made me swallow. The creation of magical energy that usually takes me an hour now only takes an instant. I don't even need to push the switch. I can just let the magical energy circulate and let my hands go. Well, I say push the switch, but I still haven't figured out where the switch thing is. The heat goes wild. Calmly controlling my speeding heartbeat, I let my hands go from the spinning cord. Blood spills out my mouth. Some vein must have been cut or something must have ripped inside of me. I channeled enough magical energy to wash out the mud inside me, so it's fortunate if I only end up coughing out blood. And to add, I don't feel any pain. It's an abnormality I don't understand, but I'm happy to have it at times like this. It's my greatest and only strength for any wounds to heal if they're not fatal. What should I be careful of is relying on it. Because the cause is unknown, if I get myself injured relying on the healing, the healing might go away next time. So I shouldn't rely on such a vague miracle. I loosen the rope. My wrists are bruised but my hands weren't tightly tied. I don't think it was Ilya that tied me up, but it wasn't tied too tightly. First of all, Ilya wouldn't be able to carry me here. Is there someone other than Ilya who isn't too strong? I get up from the chair with a stupid remark. It's good that I can move freely now, but it seems the movement was too violent. I don't have any wounds, but magical energy is still raging inside of me. Just moving causes my body to be pummeled from the inside. Must be the pain. Dizziness and nausea assail me and my limbs are senseless. I won't be able to get back home before Ilya like this. I slap my cheeks and start walking. As I start to lean on the wall and head to the door, I hear a sound on the other side of the wall. Footsteps. A few of them too, these people approaching while talking, stop in front of the door. There's no time to hide. I should. Hmm. hmm. <sighs> what was it? He can't fight, but. Hmm. You know what? I want to see how this goes. I have to fight. The one who moves first will win, so I have to fight. It's too late to hide now and I don't have time to waste. I have to get out of here as quickly as possible and go home to save her. The door opens. Standing with my back to the wall by the door, I'm ready myself for the patrol entering the room. The patrol just opens the door and does not enter the room. Hold on! You can see the chair from the entrance! Since I'm not tied to the chair anymore, won't they figure out the situation from that? This is bad. If they call for people right now, it'll get harder to escape. I'll just have to go out myself and beat the patrol. I jump from the wall to the door, and the patrol must have known I was hiding as they enter the room as soon as I jump out. I can't stop now. Whoever it is, I'll just beat them and leave the room. My body stops dead. My mind goes blank. The person that I must go and save is standing right in front of me. Hey, 
そんなことは言うまでもないでしょサーバントがマスターを守るのに理由はいりませんシローがあいやだからどうしたいやそんなことよりどうしてここ,ここはイリアの隠れ家だぞ今のセイバーが近いそそれは私のセリフですあなた一人で行動するなどあれほど言っていたのにやすやすとイリアスピールに拉致されこのような場所に監禁されるなんてシローはマスター失格ですこの件については何らかの謝罪をしてもらわなければ気が済みません Holy shit, this is not the time for this conversation! Saber speaks clearly. Her figure is just as it was before. Dude, please, not the time. It's different from the figure sleeping, weak, and in pain. Shiro, どうしたのです急に黙り込んでやはり捕まっている間に傷を負ったのですかあ,あいやそうじゃない俺のことはいいんだそれよりセイバーこそ元気そうでよかった I really regained my peace of mind I'm surprised Saber's here but I'm happy she's back to normal It's just selfish prejudice But I think Saber is meant to act like this すまなかったなセイバー事情はよくわからないけど俺を助けあはいサーバントとしてマスターを救うのは当然ですありがとうお前が来てくれて本当に助かった I'm glad there's no problem now yes there is a problem you're in enemy territory get the hell out all that's left is to escape with Saber and hey why can I see Tosaka Tosaka um is she really seriously there I thought she was really good これじゃあ私たちが出向く必要もなかったかしらだからそう言っただろうリアエミアシロなど放っておけとこの手の男はな周りに迷惑をかけるだけかけて自分だけは生き延びるのだ今回のはいい機会だった見捨てておけば勝手に死んでくれたもの聞き捨てなりませんアーチャー助力を頼んだのは私ですがあなたにシロを侮辱する権利などないはずです。Now you know what talk that talk. This, this guy deserves to have his shit slapped around every now and again. いざアルジが助かればそれか。マスターもマスターなら、サーバントもサーバントだ。協力ま、いずれ戦う身だ。情など持たれない方がやりやすくはあるが。Saber falls silent as if he hit a sore spot. This guy. Does he not get along with Saber either? So come at you. Ima got on the joke, you know, or shabby not to steady him on Iva. Ilias feel the modotic remind me, get dicey. Chotomatigra, Tosa Catacha, Cocoga, Ilia, no smica, that the static tonoka. So, so more. Ilia went out intending to kill them. Then, does that mean Ilia and Tosaka missed each other? Cascata. Ima got Ilia, which name got the domo. トーサカたちがここに来てくれるええ、そうみたいねイリアとバーサーカーが外に出たのは確認したわまあ、そうでもなければこんなところまで忍び込まないけど I see, Tosaka took such drastic measures because she knew Ilya went outside She's as direct as ever, but that turned out for the best this time とにかく話は後よここがアインツベルンのアジトって分かった時は覚悟してきたけど合わないならそれにこしセイバーがそんな調子じゃバーサーカーには立ち打ちできないしねトサーカステップスプリンミーンセイバーセイバーがそんな調子ってどこがだよ顔色もいいしもう以前のセイバーじゃないかあなたねそんな都合のいい話があるわけないでしょセイバーは全く回復してないわ立っているだけが精一杯って見てわからないリンそれは黙っていると約束したはずです悪いわねそんなの破棄よ黙っていてもマイナスなだけだしそもそも隠しそれはそうですがしかし She hesitates painfully That makes me realize her condition has not improved at all セイバー今の話ははいリンの言うことは正しい恥ずかしい話ですが
今の私ではセイバーとしてた<笑>そんなことだろうと思ったわ武装もできないぐらい弱ってるくせに一緒に行くって聞かないんだもの戦えない代わりにマスターをかばおうとでも思ったんでしょ My breathing stops. What's that? She's so weak she can't arm herself? What ridiculous things is she saying about being my shield? That's it. Why do you always think such stupid things? I start to yell that she shouldn't have brought her, but I stop myself. I'm in no position to criticize Tasaka. The root of all this was me getting captured. Tasaka and Saber just did what they thought was right. ちげんかも結構だがな。今そこまでにしておけ。リマスターならば自分の隅かの異常には敏感だろう。悠長に説明している暇はない。そうね。イリアスフィールのやつ。今頃いいわ。話は後にしてあげる。今はこの城から出
最悪あなたは死んでいるものと覚悟して殺しろだからここで素人再会できてよかった Well, that's nice. That's a nice thought. Thank you for that, Saber. Master got Bujina Sugata or Miss Tiru no Descara. What does Momakiro Akin like him? Saber says so with a faint smile. I feel the same way. I was so worried wondering whether Saber was all right. Just a Yaruki Arno Catino, Mota Mota Stirto, Honki de Saki Nikarane. The Saka yells at us from the corner ahead. Hanaster by Janakata. Isogo, Saber. I run, urging Saber on as well. Every step brings out unpleasantness and pain as if boiling water is pouring into my veins. But I can run if I grit my teeth. Forcing my aching body to move, I follow Sasaka. Saber is running behind me as if escorting a sick person. She must be in pain. She's acting firm, but Saber's in no condition to move properly. I stop myself from asking her if she needs a hand. If I said that, Saber would stubbornly try to run on her own. I should just watch for now. Saber looks tired enough that she can't make excuses. I can carry her then. Saber is really troublesome. This stubborn girl won't rest unless I do something that forceful. And so, following Tasaka's lead, we reach the exit of the castle. ここ入り口じゃないのか、父さん。ん何当たり前のこと言ってるのよ。玄関っていうのはそういうものでしょ。入る時も出る時もここが一番手っ取り早いんだから。The soccer runs down the stairs. Well, I'm in no position to complain. Saber and I descend the stairs into the hall. I guess this is the lobby, so that must mean we'll be outside if we go through that large door at the end. よし、ここまで来たら大丈夫。問題は森に出てからだけど、まあ夜だし、闇に乗じて国道まで出られるかな。イリアスフィールが戻ってきて、シロがいないって気づいたところで、後の祭りよ。あいつが帰ってくる頃には朝になっちゃってるしね。何よ、シロ、その顔。いかにも服装だけど。あいよ、別に。遠坂は大物だなって再確認してただけだ。Like entering the enemy's base from the main entrance and the way she's acting so confidently. We head for the entrance. A long hall stretches from the lobby, and a large door can be seen on the end. It's amazing. The hall is about 30 meters long. Think to myself that this place really is a castle, and the instant I start to walk. Uh -oh. The voice of the girl who shouldn't be here echoes through the room with a faint laugh. I turn around instantly. Everybody stops. The instant I turn around and see the enemy, I understand that I'll be killed if I turn my back on it again. Tasaka's voice is shaking. Across the hall, on the stairs we came down is something that should not be there. It's strangely like the time before. Ilya is standing above us with Berserker standing behind her. Berserker's pressure is overwhelming. As I can feel the servant's strength now, I understand how much of a monster he is. How absurd. He's not at a level Saber could match even in her normal condition. It probably wouldn't even be a fight. That thing is not something that can be beaten in a battle. Defeating Berserker means eliminating it without fighting it. In other words, we should have avoided him if we didn't want to die. Ilya's voice is cheerful. That smile is the same as it was eight days ago. Innocent and merciless emotion that will kill any instinct she catch. I understand now. We won't be able to get away. I can't stop Ilya no matter what I do. Even if I can get Ilya's attention, that doesn't mean everyone else can get away. She giggles. But we don't have such composure. We will run for the entrance if there's an opening. 
Even though we know there'll be no such chance, we can only wait for it. But still... Dasaka takes a step towards Ilya. The giant figure suddenly disappears. I don't know if it jumped or just moved there. Berserker appears in the middle of a lobby with a whirlwind. We're done for now. If we retreat, we'll be slashed in half the instant we turn our backs. But we'll be killed as well if we stay like this. The only path left is to challenge that mass of death knowing it'll be pointless. The girl raises her hand as if performing some kind of ritual, looking down at us and... She declares so with delight and murderous intent. Light shines in Berserker's eyes. The servant that has obeyed Ilya up to now has his mind released and identifies us as his enemies. A gritting sound. Tasaka grits her teeth hard as if regretting something. She murmurs in a quiet voice without turning around. She orders her servant to die. Archer does not answer. Ignoring Saber, Tasaka continues her instructions. Her voice is cold, killing her emotions. Archer, who has been silent as if pondering something, quietly nods and... ...takes a step forward as if to protect Sakura. Berserker does not move. Wait, did I say Sakura? I meant to Sakura. Wow. What, what a... What, what a special little slippy of the tonguey. Berserker does not move. Only Ilya's laughter can be heard from above. Neither Tasaka nor Archer has the composure for a rebuttal. Tasaka and Archer know that fact better than anyone. Archer steps forward. He is empty-handed as usual. Tasaka is watching Archer's back. She must not have anything to say to him. Tasaka should know her command is unreasonable because she told her servant to die so that we can escape. Tasaka starts to say something, but. Archer interrupts her words in a cool voice unsuited to the situation. Tasaka looks at Archer with a downcast look, still looking at Berserker. Archer says something unexpected. Yeah, you don't need to hold back. Archer moves forward. There are only 10 meters between him and Berserker. That thing should be able to close that distance in an instant. <laughs> Ilya speaks in a hysterical voice. Tasaka turns her back, not paying attention. <laughs> Tasaka starts to run, taking both Saber and my hands. Saber follows Tasaka without objection, 
I start to run to the entrance, leaving Archer behind. But from behind me, he stops me, still with his back to me. I turn around, letting go of Tasaka's hand. In the lobby, now far away is the man facing Berserker. Berserker charges. Archer stares at his enemy without backing off, still empty handed. Archer raises his hand. I don't know what he got in it, but in his hand is that short sword. The red back sinks. Berserker's attack rages. I start to run without seeing the clash of the two. Tasaka and Saber are already at the entrance. I run without turning around. The red back tells me to just go. Now that is a pretty good moment. We go down to the long hallway and pass through the gate. Unbelievably, the place really is a castle. No shit, dude. Why do you why do you keep doing this? Why do you keep repeating this? An old castle hidden deep in the forest. This whole place is surrounded by trees as far as the eye can see, and neither buildings nor sky can be seen in the distance. Leading the way, Tasaka turns to face us. Three hours, huh? I honestly don't know if my body will last that long. The pain gets worse the more I move. The heat should go away if I rest, so we don't have time for that right now. Tasaka sounds pressed as well. Tasaka's the one who gave Archer that order. She looks calm, but her mind is filled with regret. Answering and nodding, Saber starts to run as well. Making my way through the trees, I follow Tasaka. Saber is visibly breathing hard. I can't see in the darkness, but she must be in pain. Can't leave her alone any longer. Saber loses her balance. I grab her forcibly from right beside her as she falls to the ground. I pull up the arm I'm holding. It must be because Saber's light. I'm able to hold her up in my arms rather easily. Saber struggles in my arms, but her, oppo her opposition is too weak. Her ar the arms that try to push me away are too small and too weak. Well, that's, uh, hmm. Okay. That makes me painfully realize how weak she's become. I never thought Saber would be unable to push away someone picking her up. Saber is struggling with a bright red face. Well, certainly, the position she's in right now must be embarrassing for a knight, but now is not the time to worry about appearances. Saber reluctantly falls silent, so she must have accepted it. That's fine for now. If she doesn't struggle, I'll be able to run while carrying her. My vision flashes on and off. Does my blood accelerate the more I run? I... That, that's how it works. I sure hope so. Bearing the nausea in my throat, I run through the forest while gritting my teeth. I breathe wildly, but I hide my pain as well as I can. There is only one reason to do so. 
Because if I look even a bit pained, she looks at me up uneasily. I can't stop here. What a gentleman, Shiro. いい a huge breath out and kick the ground. Tasaka is choosing to go through the narrow openings even though she knows I'm carrying Saber. It's fine because Saber is light, but following her takes all my effort. Saying so, Saber relaxes in my arms. It was hard to carry her before she was unwilling, but it'll be a bit easier now. The problem now is whether Saber's body and my body will make it. How long have we been running? It feels like 30 minutes and it feels like an hour. No, running's not that bad. I haven't been training for nothing and Saber really is light. But now... Inside my body is messed up. I get dizzier the more I move and I feel like throwing up. We're in a forest so I would understand if I was bitten by a poisonous snake or something. This isn't pain that'll kill me. It's just that my chest feels heavy and I feel like throwing up. Okay, we get it. You're nauseous, dude. Like, chill out. This is nothing compared to the warmth in my arms right now. What? Saber is closing her eyes as if asleep. She's not resting because she's relaxed. Her body is getting hotter by the minute. Even though it's winter, her body is sweating and she's hanging her head to try to hide her ragged breathing. A repeat of that night. Saber collapsed from using all her energy after using that sword on Ryder. Saber hasn't healed a bit since that night. Was her ability to talk now just a brief spark before she disappears? I run trying to deny that. I don't care about my body. I just make myself believe that something will be possible if I get home and keep running. I almost fall and stop myself from collapsing by leaning against the tree. I can taste blood. So this is the cause of my nausea. I didn't spill it onto Saber since it was only a bit, but I still feel the cause of the nausea in my chest. Saber would be mad at me for a different reason if I threw up the contents of my stomach. Actually, I bet Saber would seriously try to cut me in half if I did that. Yeah, that's funny. Imagining a funny thing gives me some strength. Alright, I'm done resting. She wasn't asleep. Saber speaks in my arms. Hey, Tasaka, who was leading the way, is back here now for some reason. Tasaka glares at me. Saber must have noticed that voice. Saber says so without looking at Tasaka. Saber nods. I can't yell at her for saying such a ridiculous thing. I have no intention of leaving Saber. But still, I know well enough that Saber's condition is worsening. Saber won't last long. I vaguely knew that she wouldn't be able to make it until the morning like this. So. Okay. 
じゃあ両方とも解決しますセイバーを助けてついでに3人でこの森から脱出する My brain turns into tofu. The Sokka says the most difficult things so easily at times. The Sokka looks at Saber with a meaningful expression. Saber does not answer but merely looks downward awkwardly. What? Once we pass between the exceptionally tall trees, an unexpected sight appears before me. Holding Saber, I look at the building with blank amazement. I don't know why, but this building in the woods is now a desolate ruin. I don't know what kind of nerves she has, but Tasaka enters the ruin. I head towards the entrance, stepping over the rubble. How long has it been since that it was abandoned? The building seems like it was a corpse desecrated by the forest. Crunchy. The entrance ground floor is taken over by trees. The only usable rooms are on the second floor, and this is the best of those. Miraculously, the windows are still intact. I don't know how, but I can see the night sky from here. Really, what kind of nerves does she have? Stepping over the rubble, Tasaka is dusting off the bed by the window. I lay Saber down on the old bed. どう苦しいセイバーまだ体を動かすのには問題ねえ素人がここまで運んでくれましたからまだ体をそうなら後はこっちの問題だけかあれから1時間イリアスピールが追ってくるにしてもう少し時間はかかるわうん her mumbling reminds me. We were able to make it to this ruin, but what happened to Berserker and Archer? He remained at the castle to keep Berserker there. It's already been more than an hour, so Archer should already have retreated as well. The Sokka doesn't answer. She just places her right hand on her chest as if holding something dear. That tells me of Archer's fate. The Sokka's command spell is on her right arm. The master and the servant are connected. A saber sense my danger if the master can sense life and death of their servant. Damn. You know what? What a legend. What a legend! Tasaka murmurs as if laughing off a bad rumor. Silence follows. The silence that seems to last forever is... Aborted by the sound of Tasaka punching her left hand with her right. ここまで来たらあなたにも覚悟を決めてもらうからね。覚悟って何のだよ。決まってるじゃない。イリアスフィール、バーサーカーを倒す覚悟。セイバーを連れてたらこの森からは出られないし、彼女を自然に回復させる
What am I saying? Tasaka isn't saying we can beat it. She has no such false hopes. That's right, we're not gonna beat him to win. I should have realized that immediately. It's just that. If we don't want to die here, we have to beat that monster. けど、それほど絶望的な状況ってわけでもでも、どうするんだ、父さん。そもそも what are, what, what, are, what are you saying here, Rin? I recall the conversation yesterday. She certainly did say. Something like that. Whoa, 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 whoa. None of that. None of that. Not on this wholesome Christian channel. So here's what happened. To sum it up. Because Shiro cannot do the proper system of channeling magical energy into Saber, they had another route that Tasaka proposed. And that was for Shiro to have sex with Saber. And, uh, well, to sum it up, it works. It's fine. But it was not very good. The writing was not good about... They went into very harsh detail about what Shiro was doing and feeling and it, it it was just bad this was just a bad sex scene the writing was poor the art was not good unfortunately it, it's just this sucked it, it sucked it was an awful scene and I'm sparing you guys from having to see it so anyway back to your content Body loses power. My body wants to rest from withstanding it for so long. From giving Saber my magical energy. Is that what we're calling it now? It's getting brighter. Dawn is near. The one night dream comes to an end. That's right. I have awoken from my dream. This is no situation to remain my lingering memory. In any way, it was just a way to stay alive. So, I have to think of this as a dream. Saber's voice, sensations, everything. I have to think of this as an unfulfillable dream or I won't be able to live from now on. And the battle between the two ends. They killed and exterminated each other with all their might and it ended with the annihilation of the Red Knight. The gorgeous hall is completely transformed. The floor is cracked in numerous places. Many walls have been knocked down. The stairs have collapsed and the smashed marble has scattered in the wind. The space has been completely destroyed, leaving no trace of its former beauty. You could say that it's also destroyed time, because the remains of the destruction hide what the place looked like just two hours ago. In the middle of the destruction stands a suitable sculpture. It stands over two meters tall looking like the figure of a man carved out of a large stone. It does not even need to be said. It is Iliasvel's servant, Berserker. The giant does not move. His body is dyed and reddened, filled with holes. There is no place on the giant's body that's not wounded. First, both his legs are almost melted. Second, there is the mark of a cut on its neck. His arm is barely hanging from his elbow. He is slashed from his shoulder to his groin. A large amount of blood is slushing out from his chest. 
His internal organs can be seen in his stomach. Berserker does not move. It's only natural. It is a corpse, no matter how one looks at it. The battle itself has ended much earlier. But Berserker's master has forgotten to act as this result is too surprising and unexpected. She has to pursue her prey, but she's only looking at this scene in astonishment. She murmurs angrily. The battle that took place here was nothing but humiliation for her. Her servant is the most powerful. There should only be one or two servants able to match Heracles, the most famous of all the heroic spirits. But Archer, a heroic spirit of unknown identity, has defeated him. Oh! So... He, so wait. Archer did, did get game-ended, but Berserker got game-ended too. I guess. The Red Knight has matched Berserker equally and succeeded in killing Berserker, something no one has been able to do before. Damn! Such actions cannot be forgiven. For her, this is like being stabbed in the heart by a bug on the roadside. The pride of a girl who considers herself the strongest cannot allow her to be cornered by someone who should be stepped on begging for sympathy. <laughs> Defeated six times? What do you mean six times? The sculpture does not answer. It might be unable to afford an answer or perhaps it sees no need for one. Berserker just stands there and devotes himself to healing his wounds. This battle was too strange for him as well. His noble phantasm nullifies any attack. No attack can affect his body unless it's of the highest grade. So he rarely takes wounds. In the age of gods, no one could scratch him after he'd accomplished his great deeds. But still, six times. Archer delivered a fatal blow six times. It does not even need to be said that every one of the attacks was by a different method. Even the greatest attacks cannot be effective on Berserker twice. If one seeks strangeness, that's the strange part. Oh really? That's the strange part? If Archer is a hero with such varied abilities, his true identity should have been clear. But his true identity still remained unknown even after his body was pulverized. What was really surprising was his way of being contradictory to that of a servant. A dim light grows in Berserker's eyes. If he had been summoned as a normal servant, he would have grieved that this battle deserved better. No matter who he really was, Archer was a rare, great enemy. If he had not been mad, he could have matched sword techniques with Archer to his heart's content and passed a satisfying time. His master's voice echoes. With that, the small light of rationality vanishes. He is only a berserker now. His role is to defeat his opponents and to crush them as his master pleases. <laughs> he does not even need to answer. Wounds that are not fatal will be fully healed within a few minutes. But restoring everything would take three days. The giant silently objects. It is his instinct. Berserker has an intuition like sabers when it comes to fighting. The enemies can certainly be mowed away easily, but it'll be a different story if Servant Saber has recovered enough to use her noble phantasm. Berserker will not yield to a mere holy sword, but there is a small chance. His instinct tells him that he's to fight a servant, he should engage her in perfect condition. あんな Whoa, that's... Well, uh... That... Problema, problema, problema. The girl jumps down from the stairs. Through the rubble, she walks to the exit without a care for the bloody berserker. In that moment, the girl stops once as if remembering something. Sa, 
テイバーのマスターは簡単にこシローには一番ひどい死に方をさせてあげるんだから Smiling, the girl leaves the castle. The sun should come up soon. The forest is like her yard. No matter where her prey are hiding, it should be no problem for her to find them. As her targets, they only have a few minutes of life remaining. <laughs> 